hello everyone in this video we are going to talk about female infertility now if you see the 65 percent 65 percent of the cases of infertility are due to female factor and rest of the 35 are due to male factor if you want to understand how a female infertility works then you need to understand how an ovulation and how a re actual reproduction is happen uh, is happening in the female body for example if you see that every month a egg uh, or a follicle is developed in the ovary okay see like this and at the end of this dominant uh, at the end of the first follicular phase you find a dominant follicle now the dominant dominant follicle will rupture and the egg will be gone into the tubes meanwhile this uh, if the sex is happen and meanwhile the sperm is coming through this cervical canal and divide into two and one goes into one uh, uh, 50 percent of the sperm goes into one tube 50 percent goes into the other tube these sperms come here and here in the ampulla part of the tubes the fertilization is happens oh, fertilization happens now this embryo now after fertilization uh, once the ovum and sperm is mixed this embryo will come to the uterine cavity again and it will implant into the uterine cavity or into particularly specifically if i say into the endometrium okay now this thing uh, this is the how female infertility works now once once we find that there is uh, some reason of female factor then we can divide that there are two basic uh, types of female factors for infertility for example the first one is where the ovulation is happening and the factors where the ovulation is not there so what are the factors where the ovulation is happening still the female is for infertile there can be a tubal factor where the tube tube is blocked completely or partially so that this fertilization cannot happen and uh, the the embryo cannot come to the uterine cavity another factors are related to uterus if the uterus has a severe adenomyosis fibroid a endometrial polyp which is obstruction of ob, uh, doing the obstruction to the uterine cavity also makes the part in uterine factor of infertility the very important aspect sometimes the very uh, uh, undergraduate student does not understand yes is thin endometrium thin endometrium is also a very important part for infertility okay the endometrium should be should be good uh, good in thickness to receive uh, the embryo then comes the adhesion in the uterine adhesion can be there because of previous tncs and previous uh, intrauterine operative procedures again infertility is there now what are the reasons where ovulation is not happening so these reasons can be called n ovulatory reasons what can be there pcos that means polycystic ovarian syndrome where multiple follicles are there but a dominant follicle is not generated at the end of the follicular phase that's why once you don't have a dominant follicle you don't have a ovum that can be picked by picked up by the tubes so in PCOS the basic thing is that none of the follicle becoming dominant sometimes the premature ovarian failure is there so that the, all the follicles of the ovary are depleted and no more follicles are left no more ovums are left there into the ovary to get uh, bigger and uh, get generated okay oh, so that's why in persons of pof premature ovarian failure infertility is there due to anovulation <clears throat> sometimes the particle uh, uh, persistent follicle syndrome is also there that means that the once a dominant follicle is uh, is there but the dominant follicle does not rupture so that 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 ovum cannot come out of the ovary 
then comes the corpus luteal defect that means everything is happening ovulation is also happening fertilization is also happening but due to this corpus luteal defect where it cannot synthesize enough amount of progesterone so that the endometrium is not get progesteronized and if the endometrium is not progesteronized it cannot receive a embryo implantation cannot happen so that and if uh, implantation happens it's uh, the embryo will be uh, dislodged very quickly so this can be occur due to corpus luteum defect so these are the reasons of female factors of infertility now how to investigate whether which factor is working in the investigation part the thing i am now uh, uh, informing you is very important that uh, because uh, when you read bigger books and uh, a book bookish knowledge you will realize that there are hundreds of methods to investigate a female factor but it's very easy to actually investigate or whether to know what is the problem if you have a if, a, uh, if you have a basic knowledge of ultrasound and ovulation cycle for example you need to see uh, ovulation so usg makes the very very important part of female uh, infertility investigation for example if you want to see the ovulation in book there are hundreds of method whether to see whether ovulation is happened or not but the usg a series of usg series of usg means you see the usg at different parts multiple times in the one uh, you try inside one menstruation cycle that's why you know that that whether any a dominant follicle is becoming is it rupture or not and if it is ruptured there are enough fluid in pod or not so, so the usg the ultrasound makes the very important investigation to know the ovulation there are many other tests like day 10 day 21 of progesterone lh surge detection kits all these things are can help in the diagnosis but they are not sure but the serial usg is very sure of whether any follicle is forming or not another very important blood test for infertility female part is amh anti mullerian hormone amh is a marker of ovarian reserve and in the patient of pcos the amh is increased and in the patient of premature ovarian failure the amh is decreased so there is no ovarian reserve is there in case of premature ovarian failure in book again you will you will have a test of fsh lh estrogen levels uh, at the different days of menstruation cycle but they are less important because you know one thing that the endometrium the endometrium of the uterus is generated by estrogen okay so estrogen will make that endometrium and if estrogen is not there the endometrium is not gonna generate it. so remember this very important very uh, tagline of this infertility that the estrogen makes endometrium if there is no estrogen endometrium will not be there so and where from where you get the estrogen estrogen uh, is produced by the follicles so once a dominant follicle is becoming a, a more and more in size it keeps secreting estrogen in more and more in amount so if a dominant follicle is there then you know that that the source of estrogen is there okay but if, if the source of estrogen is there then you also know that, that the endometrium should be there so if you do ultrasound and if you find that there is a dominant follicle you must have that endometrium in good thickness okay so endometrium development along with a dominant follicle you know that the fsh is enough because dominant follicle is generated is because of fsh so you don't need to investigate or you need to do a blood test of fsh because you know that the fsh is there and it is generating the follicle so by usg only you can assume very surely that the fsh is in enough amount 
if the endometrium is good then you can also assume that that the estrogen is in good amount so you don't need to do this test if the follicle is dominant and it ruptures on time then you can know that there should be enough LH surge you don't need to test or you don't need to do a serum test of LH remember now okay uh, on the USG uh, whether I have told you that the USG is a very very important the first in investigation for infertility so by USG you can identify almost every almost every factors of infertility like whether it is endometrial polyp any fibroid adenomyosis you can also do an assessment of uterine cavity with a 3d usg if you can see any collection in the tubes you can uh, sure uh, you can see that yes the tubes can be blocked or hydrosalpings pyosalpings like that another important investigation is hsg that is hysterosalpingogram okay you to know the potency of tubes the gold standard investigation to investigate the female infertility will always be the diagnostic histro and laparoscopy by doing hysteroscopy you know the cavity you know the polyp you know the fibroid and you know the ostia with the lap or laparoscopy you know proper formation of uterus tubes and everything ovaries uh, a chromotubula chromopertubulation that means you see the uh, the dye coming out from both of the uh, tubes during laparoscopy to see whether the tubes are patent or not so this is the gold standard investigation now the treatment what can be the treatment for female infertility first of all you need to remove all the obstructive things like polyp fibroid adhesion and everything you have different options like ovulation induction intrauterine insemination that is iui in vitro fertilization that means ivf so these are the treatments of female infertility so i think this is more than enough for a uh, for a you uh, undergraduate student to know how this female infertility works and once you give these answer to your professor or your teacher or your trainer he will or he or he or she will be definitely knowing that yes you are the person who knows almost everything so thank you friends